what do you do when life doesn't make sense? Why, why do we trust God when our life falls apart? And what do you do? What in the world do you do when God is doing something in your life that you don't understand? When Jesus got ready to wash Peter's feet as a demonstration of servanthood that we are called to in leadership, Peter said, no, 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 Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus replied to him in John chapter 13 and verse 7. He says, you don't understand what I'm doing, but someday you will. And that's what happens to us many times. We're in a place in our life and God is doing stuff that we don't understand. He doesn't need to wait until you have full understanding before he goes ahead with his plan. That's when he says, trust me. Trust me, trust me. I mean, I don't know about you, but if I'm headed east and I'm hitchhiking and Jesus stops and picks me up and starts taking me west, I don't know where he's taking me, but I trust him. And when you trust him, who is the way, you don't have to understand where you're going. What do you do when life doesn't make sense. There are going to come times in your life, my friend, when nothing seems to make sense. But here's a verse I thought about as I was studying this passage of Scripture. Many people use this verse as their life's verse. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. He shall direct thy paths. Now, notice what it says. It says, lean not to your own understanding. But listen to what the Bible says in Isaiah 55 now, verses 8 and 9. God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, how far is up? You tell me, you can't. How much higher are God's thoughts than your thoughts? You tell me, you cannot. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts above your thoughts. Listen to me. Just because it does not make sense to you does not mean it does not make sense. And just because it does not make sense now, that does not mean it will not make sense later on. Not now, but in the coming years, it may be in the better land. We'll understand the meaning of our tears, and there we'll understand. Oh, friend, there's coming a day. There is coming a day when God's going to make everything right. Don't you, don't you lose your faith when it doesn't make sense to you. Just because it doesn't make sense to you does not mean it will not make sense one day. Serve Jesus. Give him your heart. Give him your life, and don't ever, ever, ever quit. It's always too soon to quit, never too late to start. Listen, maybe you're in a situation that, that doesn't make any sense. Maybe you're in a situation where God's spoken to you and he's given you specific things that he wants you to do, and yet you've said, God, you can't be talking to me. That doesn't make sense. You don't have to understand, you just have to obey. You see, there's a principle here that's very important. A lack of understanding does not excuse a lack of obedience. See, some of you have missed out way too long because you've sat back and you've refused to give God control of your life. You're trying to analyze every move that God makes and you're trying to force it to fit your limited understanding of how life should work. Quit trying to make sense of God. It won't work. Instead, trust him, obey him, and experience the victory. 
You pray and plead for God to reveal his plan. God, what do you want to do with me? What do you want to do with my life? But when he opens the door for step one, you're frustrated and don't take it. You're only willing to obey if God reveals the entire plan. You short circuit the plan of God because you're only willing to obey if it makes sense, if it doesn't last too long, and if you can see the final outcome. What do you do when God's instructions don't seem to make sense? How do you handle it when life gives you a left turn that was unexpected? Trust and obey. Just trust and obey. You get to the point where you don't mind so much that you don't know exactly where you're going because you're confident that wherever he leads you is going to be more amazing than anywhere you could have ever gotten by yourself. Isaiah 55, 9, God puts it very simply for us. He says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. See, it doesn't have to make sense to you. God's ways are much higher than yours. God's thoughts are so much higher than yours. See, you see the moment, but God sees eternity. You see no hope whatsoever, and God sees the victory that is on the horizon right now. So what does God say when you say, God, this doesn't make sense? God says, I am God. That God knows best, and I don't. And it's really that simple. (laughs) But it takes humility to come to terms with that sort of a conclusion. Say, God, I don't know. I don't know what you're up to. But I submit. You know, you've revealed certain things to me. And what you've revealed, I thank you for. But I don't even begin to believe that I have the whole story. Because I don't think I could comprehend the whole story. But what I know, and what I know about your character, leads me to believe that I can trust you. And I can surrender. The point is, he wants us to trust him. He wants us to trust in his character. You know? Because when you know someone's character, it puts you at ease about the things you don't know about what they may be doing or not doing in your life. You know, if I know somebody really well and I would trust them with my life and something happened that kind of seemed a little bit off or a little weird, I would say, well, I don't really know what they're up to, but I know them. I know they're trustworthy and he or she is a godly person. And so, you know, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Well, think how you can do that with God. I mean, we do that with human beings. Think of how you can do that with God. How do I know da, 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 da? Well, do you know God? You know that, do you understand that that's the answer to most of the questions that we have? What's going to happen to such and such? Do you know God? Do you know what he's like? Do you know his character? If you know his character, you're going to come back and say, well, I don't know what he's going to do in that thing, but I do know this. He's good. He's righteous. He's true. He's faithful. He's just. Like Abraham said to God while he was speaking to him about Sodom and Gomorrah, will not the judge of all the earth do right? Yes. The judge of all the earth will do right. And life is not fair. There are a lot of things that happen in the course of life that do not always make sense to us. And how do you reconcile the things that are, quote, unfair, particularly where it involves God and what he does for one person and what he seems to not do for another person. Things like, you know, you can have two people who are both sick and dying and you can, you pray for one and God miraculously heals one and the other one dies. Or you could have two couples who are infertile and you pray for one couple 
and they get pregnant, and the other couple doesn't. And we begin to evaluate and judge things. That's fair. That's unfair. That's fair. That's unfair. And it is particularly difficult when those unfair things affect us personally. What do you do when God doesn't do what you want Him to do? We need to understand that God's ways are higher, and some things will simply be a mystery to us and difficult to understand until we are with Jesus. Now listen to me, that is not a cop-out, that is reality. And we need to recognize that. If you always try to explain some of the things that are simply unexplainable, you will be digging a deeper theological pit, and it would be better for you to just simply say, there are some things I don't get and I don't understand this side of heaven. Because the more you try to explain it, the more difficult and agonizing it will be. And there are some things we just need to defer to God and say, God, I don't get this. I don't understand it. And by the way, He's a big God. And you read the book of Psalms particularly, there's raw emotion there. It's okay for you to say, I don't like it. You can even say, I'm angry about it. You're a big God, Lord. I give all this to you. And I'm just going to trust you because I don't understand it. You know, in a similar way, when we put things in perspective, does a bird understand the one who builds a birdhouse for her? Does a bird understand the one who puts seed in the feeder and water in the bird bath? In a similar way, can we always understand the ways of the one who clothes and feeds us? We have a finite understanding of things. We are limited in our capacity to grasp and to understand. In the same way that a bird may not understand what we're doing on behalf of the bird and the big picture of things. There are many things in this universe we simply will not understand that only God does. J.B. Phillips once said, if God were small enough for me to figure out, He wouldn't be big enough for me to worship. There are just some things we have to defer to God. Isaiah 55, 8 to 9 says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and my, ha- my thoughts higher than yours. Solomon in Ecclesiastes 8:17, he said, "Then I saw all that God has done. No one can comprehend what goes on under the sun. Despite all his efforts to search it out, man cannot discover its meaning. Even if a wise man claims he knows, he cannot really comprehend it." Some things, friends, God reserves for His understanding and His alone. Number two, it's also important when we get into these theological irreconcilable things. Number two is that God's nature is good. He always has our best interest at heart. Psalm 100 verse 5 says, For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. Let me tell you why this is so important. Because the oldest lie in the book is that God is not good. When things challenge us because we we don't understand them, and it's easy to begin to, in our minds, think that God is not good. Because if God were good, that He would not have allowed this, or He would have answered that prayer, or whatever the thing might be. And so we tend to instantly go in a dark place, and we think God's not good. And that's why this is happening. It's the oldest lie in the book. This is exactly what Satan did when he played with Eve's mind in the garden. God is good despite our circumstances, but sometimes maybe it's just not the right timing, or sometimes maybe it's not His will. But at the end of the day, we have to remember that God will straighten every crooked thing And He will level every uneven thing, and He will deal with every injustice, and He will punish every evil. And He will, if not in this lifetime, in the one to come, deliver and rescue all His children. He will, because that's our God. See, here's what faith is. Faith is holding on to the promises of God when life falls apart. 
You know what's the most comforting for me when your prayers don't get answered the way you want is the fact that Jesus didn't get his prayers answered always. That's gonna catch some of you off guard, but think about this. When Jesus prayed to the Father in the garden, he said, Daddy, if there's any way for this cup to pass for me and any other way that this can happen, nevertheless, not my will, but your will, and the Bible says he prayed not once, not two times, but three times, and the Father said, no, there's no other way. Listen to me. Being a Christian does not make you immune from pain and suffering. In fact, I would say you're probably more susceptible to pain and suffering as a Christian. But the promise God gives us is this. We have a constant companion that is walking with us and never leaves us. That's the difference between you and an unbeliever. An unbeliever clings to sinking sand. We hold on to the rock, the anchor of Christ. That's the difference. When you're dealing with the difficult circumstances of life and you can't figure out what God's doing and you don't like what God's doing in any way, shape or form, you really have a choice. You can get all upset and all lathered up and worked up and frustrated and angry and bitter, and believe me, a lot of people do. Or you can sit back and say, Lord, you know. I don't, but you know, and I will wait. Life will be full of unanswered why questions. And we can either torment ourselves with the unanswered whys, or we can believe that God is fundamentally good and trust him even when things don't make sense to us. At the end of the day, that's the choice. Things in life, friends, in case you haven't figured it out by now, won't always have simple ex explanations. It's okay to say, I don't like this. I don't understand it. But I trust in the Lord that he is on the throne and that he cares about me. When you come to these places that are not fair, it's a critical time. It's easy to get bitter, give up on life, let that be excuse to never do anything great. You have to dig down deep, say, God, this is painful. It doesn't make sense, but I know you're still in control. You wouldn't have allowed it if you didn't have a purpose for it. Part of faith is trusting when life doesn't make sense. We're never going to understand everything that happens. You can't let one betrayal, one divorce, one bad season sour the rest of your life. I know it wasn't fair. I know it was painful. It wasn't your fault but you can't stop there. You have a responsibility to get back up. Don't give up. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. Keep running the race with perseverance. Things won't make sense this side of heaven always, but one day we'll be with him forever and ever, amen.